As many of you know, every milestone sub count, I do a collections video. And this milestone is my 1.8 million subs. So thank you all very much for following me along and staying with me all this time. So for 1.8 million subs, I'm going to do a collections video on my bandsaws. And this is the latest bandsaw that I got. And I got it on Facebook Marketplace. Throughout this video, you're going to see Rob, who's holding the camera right now, do the lion's share of the restoration on this video. We're going to do interstitials of the restoration of this bandsaw while I show you my collection of all my other bandsaws. It's going to be a very special treat. We're going to run this off of my new Mr. P hit and miss motor collection. I'm going to run it off of one of the motors. Now to the collection in no particular order. So this is the bandsaw that I restored with Eric from Hand Tool Rescue two summers ago. So two summers ago in July we did this. And this bandsaw I got somewhere on the border of uh, Georgia and Tennessee. I stopped to pick up something Taylor bought on eBay. Uh, leather Skyver and when I realized the farmer who was selling it was a New Yorker he realized my accent I was from New York I was in the backwoods somewhere and we started talking all about kinds of different types of tools and I asked him about this which was sitting in his yard rusting he said oh you want that take it with you since you got your truck with you so he gave this to me for free it was a rust basket case sitting outside forever Eric came up we redid the knobs it's all in that video if you wanted to go watch it it is uh, probably from around 1940 here come look at this we, we did a little bit of a like a rat rod on it this was a hot cold knob and it has the riser block the seven inch riser block so you can do a, a bigger resaw and runs great this was just a, an old compressor motor that I got out of the garbage but this is basically how I got it we de-rusted it and fixed up some stuff Eric forced me to change the bearings, which I didn't want to do, but we did it anyway. And uh, we got it running great, and it is a great saw. I use it all the time because it's. I always keep these big resaw blades on it, so I know it's like a big chopper. So that is, again, another one of my favorite Delta Rockwell. In this case, uh, Delta Milwaukee. Company changed hands a bunch of times, but it's always been the same model. This is a Walker Turner. This is probably from, I gotta say, the 1940s because it's got the beautiful Art Deco base. But this is a beautifully heavy, incredibly heavy, super solid Walker Turner. I don't love it. And that's because all the adjustment knobs all need to be adjusted with screws and all kinds of stuff. I keep a metal cutting blade on it. The adjustments are just a little bit hokey. I don't like it, I don't love it. But I keep it just because it's a beautiful saw, just for what it is and we typically cut uh, the ice picks on it so we have this 18 tooth blade on it doesn't go super slow but for cutting brass it works great a friend of a friend family member passed away and i got a bunch of wood and a bunch of tools from that pick i ended up keeping this and a couple of other things so that's why i got that it's a walker turn some of those details look at that it's the, my favorite part but here look, look at this we'll open this up Another good thing about this is it's got this crazy casted door. The hinge door is really nice. The door is as cast as the frame itself, so it is really rock solid. I just I think I need new Carter guides for it or something. Then I'll like it better.
All right, this is a bandsaw that I got in a shop buyout in probably 90, 1991 or 92. I think this has got to be from the 80s. This is, again, a Delta. I like this one because it has the hinge doors. And this is probably the one I use the most often. I always keep a thin blade on it. When you see me cutting out letters and stuff, it's mostly always on this blade. This is an 18 TPI, eighth inch thick, and I keep this always so I can cut out tight curves. And I love this saw. I love all the deltas, of course, specifically because all the adjustment knobs, for the most part, are adjustable with your fingers. You gotta change your guide blocks with the Allen key, but that's not a big deal because that's not something you change very often. But if I go from an eighth inch to a quarter inch blade, I wanna be able to push the bearings forward and back. And I love this too because it has the hinge doors. I do love being able to take the doors off because it reminds me of my first bandsaw, which we're going to look at in a few minutes. So this can't be beaten. This is the one I keep the, the stand on. So now it's, it's on all of its legs or pick it up. Now it's on wheels. I made that in a video for Lincoln a few years back. So now it's on all of its legs. American Woodworking Machinery Company, Williamsport, PA. This is one of the three that I own. And this I got at an auction in Louisville, Kentucky last, last summer, last July. I was told when I went down there to visit the guys at First Build, they said, hey, they got a bandsaw just like the one you got. And I was like, eh, it's probably just a big one. It's probably not the same one. And when I went and looked at it, we took a lunch break and went and looked at the auction. It is the exact same one as the other one in the black barn, which we're going to see. And it is uh, from about the 1920s. It's the heavy base, which when you consider all this cast iron for it to make it all this time from the 1920s, over a hundred years, and none of this is broken. There is one cracked hinge piece, but it was repaired down there. But it's still basically intact. And this bandsaw, I got it for $600 at the auction. I was the only one that bid on it, which goes to show you that these are readily available because nobody really wants them. It's like getting a pet elephant. It's just it's too difficult to deal with uh, for most people. And the, the guys at First Build were kind enough to pack it up and ship it up from Louisville to here in New York. So I owe those guys a huge thank you, always. They've been so good to me, the guys in First Build in Louisville, Kentucky. But uh, this saw, I am the third owner. The, the family bought it from the original woodworker in the 1930s and they had it till they sold it to me. So this was in the same family since 1936 till now. And I got a nice email once the guy realized who I was and that I bought it. He sent me a really nice email said he was happy to see that it went to a good home. So that was very nice. So. This has the original guard, three phase motor. This thing is super, super strong. And this is the heavy base. This has got the bigger, thick, full cast which uh, we'll get some details of it. You will compare it to the one we just restored and you can see the difference. This is the so-called heavy duty compared to the light duty, which is the one we just ran on the hit and miss motor. And by the way, this one compared to the restored American and my other American has enclosed bearings. So this might have been a uh, like a new feature in the 20s because my others have babbins. This is enclosed bearing where it takes a little oil or cup and it's all enclosed, non babbit I'm assuming it's non babbit because it doesn't look like you can pour babbit in there, so I'm assuming they have roller bearings. Cool. 
Hey guys, I'm excited to announce that in short order, I will be launching the very first limited batch of Duresta Maker Wear. It's been a complicated, long road, but we're getting ready to sell. We're going to be going live with 200 pairs of Maker Wear jeans and about 50 Maker Wear jackets for our first run. Supply is going to be limited, so if you want to get notified before the Maker Wear goes live on my store, please click the link in the description and add yourself to the wait list, and you will have the first chance to order before anybody else. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, what you doing there? All right, so what we have here, this is a 1990 Dual. I've got this on, got this on Craigslist. Facebook Market, maybe Craigslist, it was on Craigslist. It was pretty expensive, I paid uh, $2,700 for it, but I needed a bandsaw. I was in talks with a couple of bandsaw makers and nothing really came through to do some sponsorships and I needed it faster than waiting for a deal. So I ended up just buying this. I'm so happy with it. It is multi speeds. It's got high and low and then in the high and low there's a range you could turn the crank handle which we'll do a close up of in a minute. But it also has the blade welder which works. It's three phase. I run all my three phase tools off of the American Rotary Amp Unit which works fantastic. So the dual doesn't have much, it doesn't have much to adjust. Right now I'm running it with an 18 tooth per inch Starrett blade, we run it slow. And there's not a lot of adjustments, it just turns on and off and that's it. The guide blocks here are what they are, they're like very solid, there's not much to adjust. You're always going to run a fat blade on a bandsaw like this, you're not going to run like an 8 inch blade, so it doesn't matter. Um, Super strong, super reliable, strong and slow, which is what you need for cutting metal. And I love it. And uh, a couple of people asked me, Eric specifically, if it came with all the attachments to pull the material through the blade. I never saw any of that stuff in person, but I heard about it. I went and looked it up online. And with a dual, you could have this thing which like pulls the metal through the blade, which is some kind of automated thing. Also, duals. They call it a do-all because you used to be able to put a filing blade on here. You could run a sandpaper belt on here. You could run all. You could run like a stone cutting blade on it. They have all kinds of accessories. But for my purposes here at the shop, all we needed for is cutting metal, and it's just amazing. I really love it. It was a really good investment. So if you can get your hands on a do-all, get yourself a do-all. Right, Rob. Right, Jimmy.
So I'll tell you a funny story. A few years back, maybe six years ago, I won $15,000 in the Super Bowl. And I said to myself, what is the one thing that I want that I can go buy right now without guilt? And it was a handheld bandsaw. And I went and I bought this DeWalt handheld bandsaw at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. And it was my main metal cutting bandsaw in the New York City shop for a long time. And at one point during a, a Lincoln video, I ended up making this stand, which is designed to so that it could stand up so I could use it like a tabletop or I could pick it up and still keep the stand on it. So that's what this whole concept is for. So this still comes in quite handy. We keep an 18 TPI blade on it. It gets used every day still. And I could show you this little interesting trigger mechanism. Because they don't have a, a locking trigger on these things. So we either just shove a wedge of wood in there or I keep one of these clamps on it and I give it a half turn and it stays on. It's like a third world country in this room. Do that, I shut it off. And that's how we keep this powered on. And again, since I just undid the clamp, the idea is I could pick it up and still use it as a chopping band. So if I wanted to bring it to the material, we'll keep it standing up so I can bring the material to it. This is a chopping bandsaw from Wynn. I bought it on Amazon. I don't have a bandsaw sponsor, so I spray painted it white. And this thing is like, for the money, it's good, it's useful, but you know, it's, it's not the most high quality tool, but it definitely does the job if you're doing small production cuts. But we have it when we need it. I forget, I think I used this for the barbecue video last year, I think, I can't remember. Anyway, it's good to have. I just wanted to try it out. Ultimately, I want to get a better quality one of these. This satisfied that need when I needed a cold saw. So I went and I bought this for 100 and change and I didn't have to spend $5,000 on a cold saw. That was a, it was a Band-Aid. This is a Craftsman chopping bandsaw that we use for metal. And I got this from Craftsman when I was working on the TV show Hammered. And there's a lot of shadows in this area, but it's we got a lot of production going on. This gets used at least once a week. It's Don't be fooled by how dirty it is. This thing has saved me many, many, many times. And I only dropped it once, trying to load it onto my truck. It did a crazy backflip, flip over, got oil all over the place because the oil pan was completely full and it still works fine. So one of these days I'll get myself a better version of this, something a little bit higher quality, a little less worn out. But I got this in 2006, so that's how long I've been using this. It's great to have.
Yeah, so this is a bandsaw that I got from Andrew at Blacksmith Tools. He picked this up. This is the, the Delta Rockwell with the Art Deco base. This has got to be from the 1940s, I'm guessing, if anybody knows specifically. I never checked the serial numbers on these things. I use them. I love them. This is, again, my favorite style bandsaw, which uh, I'm going to show you a couple more. Um, this has two speeds. This is for wood and for metal. And when I got it, it's three phase. But when I got it, it wasn't shifting gears. Andrew didn't know. He just bought it and sent it right to me. But if you look back here, let's see if I can get this to switch gears. Can you see that? There it goes. So that's how you shift gears. So now you're in one gear there, and then you engage that pulley, and now you're in another gear. So now you disengage, you're in probably for cutting wood. Now you're in for cutting metal. So it disengages some internal gears and re-engages them when you push that and pull on that. They're kind of hard to find, especially intact. This one was already, uh, it needed to be repaired, but it was a simple repair. I did it on Instagram about a year ago. Anyway, so I think Andrew picked this up. He gave it to me for what he paid for it because we're friends. I think we paid 300 bucks for it. So it's a great deal. This is worth about a thousand bucks. You know, in good working condition. Chickens agree. I bought these knobs on eBay. Just had nuts and bolts. So I bought these knobs on eBay. They, they just fit. They probably, they offered Delta Rockwell, but this saw was set up. It had short pegs, but they do fit couple turns and it just dresses up the saw makes it look nicer more original I have it set up in here for cutting metal for the machine shop So here we are in the blacksmith shop on the property and this is a Wells metal bandsaw, metal chopping bandsaw and I paid 50 bucks for this and it was in pieces. I had no idea what a Wells bandsaw was, I had never heard of it. It looked kind of cheap to me, of course I said I'll take it, whatever. And when I brought it home and put it together, did some research on it, turns out these are very well made, respected saws. This thing is dead simple. It's got a couple of simple little mechanisms on it you can just let the weight of it go down and cut through it it doesn't need a hydraulic or anything and it has this little interesting gear mechanism here which keeps it up when you need it to stay up and pulling close it's got this really cool little quick release for tightening on stuff you can just pick it up and pull it out find what you need on top of that gear on that rack and tighten it where you want it so this has been very convenient. That's why I leave it out here in the blacksmith shop because we're always cutting stock with it. This is really cool. So this spring, it keeps it from jamming against the thing, but that little mechanism is great because when you're gonna load the stock wherever you need the stock to be, you can just rest that down quickly. When you use this saw, you start developing a pattern of how to use it and it's actually quite convenient. You think because it doesn't have an automated stop, it might be a pain in the butt, but that actually, I wish that was on more saws, having that little stopper like that. I keep a 14 TPI blade on that. And under here we have two speeds. Actually, we have three speeds under here. Here is a Kalamazoo metal chopping bandsaw. It cuts 12 by 16 profile, I think. Yeah, it's 12 inches this way, 16 inches this way. This thing is a monster. Don't be deceived by the way it looks. It actually works well. I leave it out here because it's just for cutting big stock. 
and this thing is such a monster I don't have a good base for it right now the original legs were taken away these things come with typically casted legs so in my searches I'm always looking for the original legs for this Kalamazoo metal chopping bandsaw I keep a pretty aggressive blade on it catch out this piece we're gonna get our asses stung. So, the Kalamazoo chopping bandsaw, I got it from New York's uh, Seaport. I think I did it on another story when I was going through tools a couple years ago. But I got it for free from the, the Seaport, was throwing it away. My buddy who was working there at the time as a volunteer called me and said, you gotta come take it. So I went and grabbed it. And a funny story is when I showed it on my last video about that saw, which was five years ago, one of the guys in the comments recognized it and knew where it came from because he worked at the shop that donated it to the New York Seaport. And he's like, that's a very good saw. I'm glad you have it. So there it is. It needs a little oil. Get some oil on there. So this is my, uh, what we call the YouTube band. So when we all kind of started developing a community on YouTube, a lot of us started putting stickers on our band saw. So this is the band saw that I started putting stickers on in the New York City shop, I guess about eight years ago. So a lot of these stickers are old. And I see some old friends that I know aren't making videos anymore. And I see some guys that were new at the time that are still doing really well making videos. So it's, it's really cool to see this as like a moment in time. This is a Delta Rockwell. This is from about the 1980s when I did a shop buyout from a friend in Brooklyn, a friend of a friend in Brooklyn, and I bought truckloads of lumber, tons of tools, and spiked the cat for $500. This was one of the tools that I got. So this was a fraction of the $500 bill that I paid for all that stuff. So I guess you could say I probably paid $100 for it. But it was a desperate situation. He was scheduled to leave New York. He needed to leave right away. And he was running out of time to sell his shop. So that's why I got a good deal. Those are the best deals when somebody has to get out of a lease. These tools are here in the big barn because this is where we do either the axe handle making class or the spoon making class. And so there's a couple of bandsaws here. That's why this is here. Run this for just a few seconds and see what happens. Turn the oil around. And that cools the piston head, which is down in there. This is the very first American Woodworking Tools bandsaw that I've acquired. I got it from a very generous fan who retired, and he gave me a very good deal on it. He wanted to see me have it. He was very generous of him. Thank you, George. And just like many things in my life, when I get one thing or like the ether knows that I have one, the, the universe gives me more. So I got this one, then I got the one in Louisville, and then on Facebook Marketplace about eight months ago, six months ago, I got the one that we restored. Well, this has a 220 single phase motor on it, which is still extremely strong. And, uh, come take a look. It's got the cage and all the other stuff on it. You guys might remember the video I did for Lincoln Electric where I made the base. That's what this is the band so for. Again, the heavy bottom base, a little bit different than the one that I opened up the video with. That is the, 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 uh, the light duty. This again is the heavy duty. So I have two heavy duties with the cast doors. Come take a look at the doors. Just like before, we got the steel cast iron doors, which are in really good shape, thankfully. Made it all this time. And uh, this is, it's funny now how American woodworking tool band saws keep coming into my life. I pass on them all the time only because of logistics or a lot of guys think they're worth a lot, a lot of money. 
I mean, if you can get a perfect one for $1,000, that's a really good deal. Much more than that, people think that just because they're old, they're worth a lot of money. Eh, maybe the history helps sell it for a little bit more money. Maybe if it belonged to a certain person or had some unusual history. Generally speaking, 1000 to $1,500. Nice, all original. geared very slow so we could probably put a metal cutting blade on here. We're gonna put a real electric motor on here inside. Sometimes we have to do the blacksmithing class in here because it's too cold outside. This becomes the bandsaw to chop up the stock. It is a Milwaukee that I got somehow I think I bought it. And the guys at Swag Off-Road made me this cool stand for it. So shout out to the guys at Swag Off-Road. So this is a great entry-level bandsaw, either one of these, DeWalt or Milwaukee. It's a great entry-level metal cutting bandsaw if you're just going to be working in a small shop. All right, what you're looking at here is my very, very first bandsaw that I ever learned how to use. This was a bandsaw my dad got from a gentleman in the firehouse when I was like seven or eight years old. So this bandsaw has been in my life for at least 40, 43, 44 years. And it's obviously a Delta Milwaukee, probably gotta be from the 40s or the 50s. We never had the original base. The base that was on it was really hokey. And then one day I decided to make an even more hokey base out of plywood, which is ridiculous. So I want to restore this bandsaw in a video. This is my very first bandsaw and a funny story that I often tell. When I was too young to be able to turn on the electric and use the bandsaw when I was like, maybe, I guess I was like 10-ish. My dad wouldn't let us use the electric when he was at work. So he had the electric shut off in the whole shop and me and my cousin or my brother, we would turn this thing while the other person cut. So I'd stand out here and power it while my cousin Thomas or my brother John would cut and we would all take turns turning this thing. So I, there was a time when I was little enough that this felt like a steering wheel. We turn it and cut. So I have it in here because we were doing some nice big thick resawing on here for the uh, spoon making class. But this is in desperate need of proper setup. I set it up as you see it about 15 years ago and I haven't changed it. I just did a quick setup because I had the body alone with a motor. And so I did this stupid ass stand. I'm in a desperate search for an Art Deco base. I was talking to somebody, but the deal fell through. So if anybody out there has an Art Deco base that I could use to restore this, please let me know. That's perfect, so. everybody for 1.8 million subscribers. When I hit 1.9 million, I'll do an anvil collection. And when I hit 2 million, I'll do something super special. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, 
I think soon I'm going to put a three-phase motor on this. The uh, hit-miss motor runs a little too slow. Thank you for joining me. I hope you like this. And if you have any questions or if you have any information pertaining to some of the machines I showed, because I don't know too much about everything, just put it in the comments below. If you know the dates or manufacturer dates on some of the things I showed, you could list it in the comments below. Thank you very much.